start off by just drawing a little circuit. So the circuit's got whoa, a voltage source like this. And let's take each of these resistors as one. These ones are going to be two, two, five ohms. Okay. Uh, if I were to say something like this, and my battery here is nine volts, I'm going to ask you what is the voltage through each resistor and what is the current through each resistor? How would you do it? Give me steps on how to do this. What would be your first order of action? Add series resistors, all right. Now adding the resistors, ultimately what's your goal then? What's the, exactly, okay. So your first step should be to find the total resistance, all right. Step one, oh, okay, that's not the right thing. You, okay, step one would be find REQ for the circuit. Uh, finding REQ allows you to find what? Why did you find REQ? Yep. Find the total. It's not A, it's I. But the, the unit is A. The unit is A. So to find total current. Okay. And then three would be to, so once you have the total current, then you, what'd you do with that? Find the total voltage, uh, yeah, but where would, are you going to find that total voltage? Because you're given the total total voltage, it's already 9 volts. Exactly. Find voltage and current at each resistor. Okay. Do you need a review on this, or are we good for this? What's that? I can't hear you. You're good? Okay. All right. So let's move on from this. Okay. Hello? Uh, it's not going off the Um, It's just for this. Okay. Okay. It's the ones that are indicated by the dots. Okay, so that's, you can assume that's what the charge is. Sure. Okay. This much. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to assume you guys know this, so we'll move on to... Oh, yeah. So yeah, so today we're going to talk about di diodes and light emitting diodes. 
What you need to understand about diodes is uh, what well, today's lesson objectives are for you guys to understand what diodes and light emitting diodes are. And the fundamental, most important thing about diodes is that they're kind of like valves. You guys know what mitral and, and um, bicuspid valves are? Like who's taking biology, uh, the second biology? Now it's not often now, it's next lesson. Okay. So you'll learn this next lesson. And hopefully, maybe you'll have even learned it when you were in high school, when you did, um, when you were in grade nine and you were doing civil now plus. Um, there's a, there was a unit on blood. There's a unit on blood and the heart and how the heart works. Yeah, what's in the um, what's in the veins that's special? Hey? There are valves in the veins, and, and what do they do? What do the valves in the veins do? Yeah. Okay, so it's not certain things in and out, but just in. Okay, so the the valves in your in your veins, arteries don't have that. In your veins. Um, they allow blood flow in a certain direction, and once the blood goes through, they can't come back. So it prevents backflow of blood. That's exactly what diodes are in a circuit. So if you put um, a diode in a circuit, you're preventing the entry of uh, the current from one direction to the other. So you can see here, um, the current can go this way, but cannot go in that direction because of the installing of a, of a diode. Yeah, and the circuit. Now, again, I'm going to remind you guys to next class have your circuit board. We're going to do some activities. Um, so make sure you have them. Otherwise, you can't do it. I'm just going to ask you to leave and it's going to be awkward. Uh, all right. So, yeah, so in your kits, you're actually going to have diodes and things like that. And, um, and that's going to be one of the things that we're going to play around with. Do you guys know the difference between AC and DC current? I mean, I'm going to explain it again, but I'm just curious. Exactly. All right, that's a that's a really big important difference to remember about uh, alternating and direct current. So AC for alternating current, direct current is DC, and um, and the big major difference is that direct current, the current's always going in one direction. All those circuits that I draw with one battery or whatever, those are all direct current circuits. But actually, if you plug in your um, you plug in your, your your power cable here, then you're you're getting actually a Alternating current. Who's got a Mac? You have a Mac? You have your adapter? So this here is made for the new type of electricity, which is the alternating current. If you notice, both of the plugs are the same size. This means that you can connect it this way, or you can connect it this way. And the reason why you can do that and not destroy your computer is because that's coming you an alternating current and you have a diode in here that's regulating the direction of the flow so that the flow of the current can only go in one direction and not damage your computer. All right, some of the other ones um, will have a different size so that you can't plug it in in the wrong direction. Does anyone have one of those? It's got a ground, but I'm one. Here, let me just see what it looks like. Oh, yeah, it's the same size. Well, I mean, also, if you look at the plug in front of you, you'll see that one of the holes, one of the slits, is actually longer than the other slit. And the reason for that is because those some devices don't have those uh, diodes in them, so they need to have the current going in the right direction at every point. Okay? That's what diode does, and the way you would represent it in a circuit is by something that looks like a, it would look like the symbol would be like this, to indicate which direction it allows current to go in. All right. So in this case, this diode is only going to let current go towards the right. Okay. So in this case, um, you have two LEDs, right? And it's represented by these two lines. These two lines are um, the connect of your light emitting diode. And uh, I'm going to ask you a question: Which one of these diodes is going to light up? Red or green? Yeah. 
green. So absolutely it's green. The reason for this is because the current will go this way and the, um, the green light will light up. And then over here it'll go and it'll stop at this red LED because that LED is plugged in in the wrong direction. By that's our convention. We, we, we decided on this symbol, and the symbol at the top right, based on the conventional direction of current. In reality, it doesn't really matter what the reality is because this is just a drawing. So in reality, it would still go like this. Yeah, because the diode here is facing the wrong way. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's how it would work. And you can imagine all sorts of neat ways that you can use this to manipulate where your current goes and how to make switches and things like that. It's quite, quite impressive. Um, I just realized the answer is right there. Okay. So, okay, so now we're talking about LEDs and that's um, pretty important. And, uh, we've, we see these quite a bit. Is there, did anyone buy this kit yet by any chance and have it here? No, not a single person. Um, okay, if you look at an LED light, uh, it looks like this or or like this, and this LED light is tiny. Um, what's really cool about them, though, and what makes this technology so amazing is that, one, they're bright. They're really, really bright. And two, the resistance compared to a light bulb of equal brightness is super, super, super low. So they actually consume a lot less energy than um, than a regular light bulb. Who's replaced their house light bulbs with LED lights? Yeah, they're they're worth their money. They're like eight dollars a bulb, right? Versus like a, like eighty cents a bulb for the regular type. So six dollars, but you make your money back in uh, in the amount of energy that you spend per year on electricity because it uses like it's like a it's six, a sixty watt light bulb is comparable to a two point five watt LED bulb. So it's 60 watts. Do you guys remember what watts stand for? Any of you know? Watt hours? Do uh, you guys remember that? Watts per hour? Joules per hour? Yeah, exactly. So watts are, are, are units of how much energy you use per time. And um, and it, if you compare them, like, so 60 watts for a regular light bulb to 2.5 watts for a LED light bulb, we're talking about like almost 30 times less energy used for that. And imagine how in how in one year you're for sure making your money back in terms of energy costs for the cost of the light bulb. And the best part is the lifespan is like a hundred thousand hours. Whereas a light bulb they burn out and you gotta change them like twice a year kind of thing. Right? But an LED bulb they have hundreds of hours of life of uh, lifespan. So it's just silly not to another random fact of information. So another random fact of information is and the government subsidizes you if you use LED bulbs. So if you buy a whole bunch and you show that your whole house is full of LED bulbs, then they'll actually give you a tax break on your income taxes the following year. And that means that you're saving even more money because you're, and you're, you're thinking of the environment, you're thinking of the city, and you're saving money just based on all those things. Do you guys know what, um, what are they called? Uh, like, I don't know what the point is, like tra high traffic times are for energy consumption in the city block? Where? What time? Between 4 to 7, and in the winter it actually goes on later. It goes until 4 to like 9 or 10. Uh, sorry, it starts earlier in the winter. Not in the winter. And these are times where actually you might not know this, but your energy costs more money. Right? The Hydro Quebec charges you more money based on when you use electricity. So um, you definitely want to be at, that, at those times using uh, trying to save as much as you can. I'm, just, I'm saying this because my parents are up this generation and they're like, what is this magic LED? Look how ugly it is. Look how weird, look how expensive it is. And they don't buy it. And you know, and we're, we're stuck paying like $150 a month on electricity. And it's really bad for the environment. That stuff is really important. Okay, anyways, back to these LED bulbs. Uh, they're made of these tiny, tiny, they're tiny, they're like, uh, let's say like three millimeters by three millimeters, like three millimeters here by three millimeters here. And they're always made up of these two long stems. 
can say it's really long term gift. And by convention, the long one is always going to be the positive one, and the short one is going to be the negative end of the LED. So an LED is a light emitting diode, but it's still a diode. So if you don't plug it in in the right direction, it's going to block your current for everything. Okay, so make sure that when later on when you guys are building your circuits, nothing is working, then it could possibly mean that one of your LEDs are plugged in backwards. Okay? So far so good? So here it is, an LED plugged in and an LED plugged in backwards. You can see here that the LED is plugged in correctly. And here, well, I mean, the drawing is for some reason off. It should, the drawing should be the other way around. This. And if you have this, you have literally no voltage across this light bulb here. And your current just shuts off. And it's almost as if you were to disconnect your, your, your circuit altogether, and there's literally no flip. So these two points are important. When voltage is applied across the diode in such a way that the diode allows current, the diode is said to have forward bias. Okay, it's just a term that we use to describe it. So it's a forward bias and reverse bias. Forward bias means that it allows current to go forward. Reverse bias means that it prefers the current to go backwards. Okay. So in this case, in the first image, we have forward bias diodes. And in the second one, we have reverse bias diodes. Um, every LED has this peak value that it could handle, right? And if you go above that peak handle, you'll blow your LED. And you'll see that uh, you guys are going to blow up a lot of LEDs. They don't actually blow up if they don't spark or anything like that. But they'll just basically die off and you'll have to get a new one. But then the, the, the good part is, is that if you do blow it, it's like 10 cents to replace one of those tiny things. It's really not that expensive. Uh, there are different annotations for LEDs or just even diodes, and here are some of them. This is the one that we're going to see the most often, right? But just know that if you can see them in these two variations as well, if you're looking at them up on the internet or anything like that. So how they work is quite weird, the way it works. So there are these, I'm just going to wait until everyone's at this point here. So how they work is really quite weird. So if you have current in a certain direction, um, the LED, what it does is that it allows these pockets, these low energy pockets for electrons to sit in. All right? And if there's a low energy pocket for electrons to sit in, the electrons are going to flow there, and then they're going to just fall into those low energy pockets, and they're going to stay there, so they'll prevent, they're going to prevent the uh, flow from going through. Okay? So here are those low energy pockets that are positively charged. The current's coming in this way, and they kind of like drop, they fall into those little pockets. They fall into those pockets, they can't go through. Okay? But if you're going in the other direction, those pockets are, um, are actually covered. So if you're going in this direction, then you, the, the electrons will not be falling into the pockets, and therefore they'll be able to pass and go through. With that, because the way it works is there is a, um, it's like a, there's a voltage difference that allows the positive charges to oppose the flow of the electrons, and the electrons will not will not have enough motive force to go through. And when I just the electrons fall through, the charges can fall can follow like uninhibited, kind of like a kind of like going against the current. Let's just say that way. The electrons are the current. But there is a flow, there is an electromotive force in the opposite direction. Yeah, so like if I were to like zoom in, you can, uh, it actually doesn't show it here. They're kind of like parallel plates that causes a voltage difference across the, the, the area, and therefore the electrons won't be able to flow through. 
Um, this is what it looks like on the inside. There are parallel plates, and those uh, low low energy um, pockets are going to be located into that green surface there. And um, I'm going to use the terminal pins that I talked to you guys about. So there's going to be one that's going to be longer, the other one's going to be shorter. And again, this is what they're going to look like when you go out. Okay, so you're gonna, you guys are going to have a lot of these. And actually, I believe there's one. This is, um, you know how you have to do a project at the end of the year um, in, in, the, in this course? This is the student's project. They're really as simple as this. They look really crude, but you can see that there is a bunch of LEDs there. And uh, if I were to connect this, it's actually quite interesting. The way it works is as follows. So. Ah. So that's, uh, that's one of the students' projects. Um, they wired this, and uh, they came up with this kind of really cool uh, system. This is as sophisticated as we want something to be for this project, by the way. It doesn't have to be some kind of like marketable project where you want to like sell it to a shark tank and have people approve it or anything like that. Ah. But anyway, those lights, those are the LEDs that are coming. I don't know. My, asking, but my wife asked for some for Christmas, so yeah, she's 33. <laughs> um, those things are also LED, and they, 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 they work by impact, right? So it's, it's kind of like a switch underneath your foot, and when you press it, then the light up. Thing. So it's a cool product. The different gases that make these, um, that make the, no, sorry, there's different materials that light up different colors to make the different colored LEDs. And what's interesting is something I don't know how it works, and maybe one of you guys can explain it to me one day, is um, how you can have one LED light emit all the different colors, right? Because you have those, right? You have like, uh, anyone have those notification um, lights on their phone? And then it's like red if it's a text message, green if it's a Facebook message or whatever. Like that's just one LED light that's changing its like color each time. So that I'm curious to know how they work. I actually have no idea. These are how they, these are the different materials used for uh, the different colors that we have, but they do not, they're not versatile in their colors. They can only do that color and then that's it. Um, again, so these are um, some more details about it. Please read them. I'm wondering if I should stop here. Hmm. Let's do this and then we'll, we'll call it, call it a day after this. Okay. Um, so here we have a, a current that has something called an LED, uh, a diode rectifier. And this is based on what I was talking about, that uh, if you have an alternating current, right, then you're going to have current in two directions, all right? So here is your AC input, your alternating current input, which means that it's going to take turns sending a current in that direction and a current in that direction, all right? And if you didn't have these, um, if you didn't have this rectifier, what would happen is, So here's your AC power source. You, we always draw it like this. So that's an AC power source. A DC power source is going to be like this. Okay, so that's what you're used to. This is an AC power source. So if you have an AC power source like this, connected to a load, then the current's going to go in this direction and in that direction, alternating. All right, so never at the same time, but alternating. And so, therefore, you're, this can disrupt the, the amount of voltage that you get um, in that resistor. So, remember where sh I showed you guys that video where we use capacitors to compensate for that? You guys remember? Okay. Yeah, no, you don't, but let's say you did. So, if you don't want that to happen, if you want to have a constant voltage across this, 
and you have to rectify for all the negative voltages. So the way you do that is by connecting uh, diodes in this configuration. So if we were to follow the current for one of these alternative current regions, so let's say you have one that goes up and then goes here into the node. Where is it going to go once it reaches that node? It's going to go towards this direction. And then it has no choice but to go around here. All right, and then it comes here, and then where does it go? Down. Or it can go up again, but it's not going to because the voltage is less there. It's going to go down, and then it can't, it can't go back up here, so it's got to go back down and into the source again. Okay? And if we were to go the other way, the backwards way, so I'm just going to erase all this. If I were to go into the backwards way, I reach this node. Oh, I have no choice but to go here, go around, and then go back down, and come back here. Oops, uh, sorry. It's, uh, yeah, come back down here. Okay? So either way, it's going to go through the load and then come back. Make sense? So that's what is, uh, this diode rectifier is. You guys will need to know how to do that. So if I show you a circuit and I ask you to make sure that the current only goes in one direction, you should be able to do that. I'll have some activities for you guys to, to do that on, but you need your, uh, you need your kit to, to be able to do that. Uh, let's watch this movie and then call it a day after that. You guys are screwed. Fine. It's got no sound, so that works well because I don't have sound here. Too. All right, so again, remember, make, make it your homework to buy those kits. Come back to the next class having those, okay? Have a great weekend.